First Updates Now videos are brought to you by Stryker. Discover why so many FIRST alumni and mentors are putting Stryker first when it comes to their careers, internships, and co-ops. Visit careers.stryker.com forward slash first to learn more. So Justin's going to kick us off, and then on our 25th uh, ranked team for week one, 2020, is going to be 4130. From Richmond, Michigan, Richmond High School, it's the Blue Devils, 18-0 undefeated winners of the Southfield District event. So beginning in FIM, the Blue Devils started their season as good as possible. Their tall robot features a multi-ball auto mode to give them the highest auto score at the event with 421. I think it was roughly like 70 or 75 points more um, than anyone else at the event. So their auto mode was a huge advantage. In the elimination rounds, they played, I'm sorry, in the playoffs, they played playoff. Playoffs. They played rebounder <laughs> with 35, 38 cycling and 41, 30 uh, cleaning up and playing some very selective defense, which I thought was another really maybe under, uh, under, flying under the radar skill that they uh, they they employed there in the playoffs. So they had a really fast fast climb that rounds out a really impressive robot. And you can catch them as they compete out of district at the Waterloo event uh, up in Canada in week four. And that's team 41-30. So I think there's going to be quite a few uh, Michigan teams that are going to be at Waterloo. I think yeah, that's Waterloo. it because I have two on my list that are going to be there. And there's a third that you just mentioned. So Yeah, Waterloo's going to be a hoot and a half. That's going to be fun. Very good. <clears throat> All right, moving along. In the 24th spot, we've got team 3847. From Houston, Texas, and St. Agnes, and Strake Jesuit College Prep, it's Spectrum. An overall record of 17-1, and one, and they were the winners this past weekend at Dripping Springs District Event. So Spectrum enters the 2020 season looking to get back to Einstein for the second straight season. They would rank number one overall with an 11-1 record and select uh, fellow Texas powerhouse 1477 and 3240, and they would win in six matches. They won each of those each of their six matches by at least 30 points and get those, e those emotes ready because 38, 47 is our first cling bling team of the season with taking home the engineering inspiration award as well at dripping spring. So give us that gold silver in the chat and let's uh, congratulate and wish them luck there this season uh, as they'll be headed back home to the hometown Houston event and then on to district championship. So congratulations, 3847. And for those of you um, that don't know what cling bling is. I was going to ask you that. I was going to ask you to explain it. <laughs> so this goes back to, um, I don't know what year it was, Justin. We were both on 340. Um, yeah. I don't know, maybe it was... 2006 or seven, five. No. I don't know. Seven, 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 seven. Yeah. yeah. And it was, um, we had, uh, I think we had one chairman, or we had one um excuse me we were finalists at the event so you get you know you get your silver medal and then we won chairman's later because it comes yeah. after so you're wearing two medals right? oh engineering inspiration yeah. i cheated i looked at i looked at the medal in my law <laughs> he's got him right there so it's silver <laughs> silver so right so if you for those who've had like two medals before or been at events where teams have right they like cling against each other so we just started calling like it cling, cling. like look oh there you go yeah cling <laughs> So that's kind of where so it's we, like you're walking around the venue after the award ceremony and all you hear is cling, cling. And we had, I think we had like one student, like everybody was quiet, right? Everybody come back. We had like one student, I think, that was walking back to the stands. Cling, like, cling, was just cling, cling, cling. cling. <laughs> it's just like they didn't like hold it against themselves to like quiet. Yeah. It was just cling, cling. So that's where cling, cling started. Like, tough over, problem to have. Yeah, like 13 years ago. So. Uh, now we kind of say it uh, on the top 25 here. So, uh, so cling bling. So it could be gold, 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 silver, silver, gold, whatever. So we usually do, I think it's winning whatever the robot did first and then uh, engineering inspiration or, or chairman. So that's usually how it goes. But yeah, so uh, gold, silver for them. So uh, congrats to 3847 uh, Spectrum. All right. So moving on to our 23rd ranked team. Uh, Christine's going to tell us about team 340. So coming out of Churchville, New York, with Churchville Chili Central High School District, it's Greater Rochester Robotics. With a current record of 15-0, and 0, that is right there, undefeated. They're winners of the Miami Valley Regional in Dayton, Ohio, this past weekend. So they headed west, not south, to the Miami Valley <laughs> yeah. Regional, not in Florida, along with 59 <laughs> other teams. It was a pretty deep event. So after overcoming some practice day issues, they turned... Or they charged on and had a clean, undefeated event after nine qualification matches. Um, consistent vendor shots going almost five for five every single time, which Justin can attest to because he was there watching them. Um, every single time led them to being captain of the number two alliance with 1787 Flying Circuits and 3266 Robots R Us. 
Um, an epic start to the season, going completely undefeated through quals and limbs, taking home a nice blue banner and punching their ticket to Detroit champs. It's a pretty good feeling leaving week one knowing that you're already going to champs. So mm-hmm. um, they'll be competing week three, though, at the Finger Lakes Regional before they head to Detroit. And with no bag, um, I only see them getting better and better this mm-hmm. season. So, Justin, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about how 340 did in Ohio? Yeah, I mean, they did awesome. It's, you know, 340 is Mike and I's uh, alma mater alumni team. I don't know how you say it, but uh, <laughs> so, you know, we have uh, a lot of friends on the team and, you know, it was nice to go down there and, you know, it was kind of a two pronged effect. You know, I wanted to see the game in person and, you know, see what we can, we can learn before we competed and cheer them on and support them how we could, but they were just so good. Um, you know, they were consistent, didn't have any of those, you know, and I, a testament to this no bag thing. I know a lot of people are complaining, like teams won't be ready. Teams are going to, you know, they're going to wait till the last minute. Teams are going to be worse. Teams are good. Teams have figured it out. Teams are ready to go. And 340 was ready to go. Um, and they just, uh, they executed. They didn't have any of those stupid mistakes that trip up teams, you know, at their first event, they're fighting through gremlins. They haven't had their, you know, they haven't had their practice robot updated in time or whatever the excuse is. These teams were ready to go. 340 was good. And, you know, like uh, Christine mentioned at the top, you know, it was it was a surprisingly deep event. Like there were teams that could score. There was um, it was a lot of really good matches. There were so many triple climbs during the playoffs. It was just awesome to see. And it was awesome to see 340. Yeah, picking up. Yeah, picking up uh, 3266. Uh, 340 had yeah three solid, like at least autonomous shooters on their alliance. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. So to be able to get that with your second pick, your third robot. uh, For sure. Had a week one. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, we, yeah nonetheless like exactly. at a week one that's yeah. huge so, yep it was awesome uh, the matches that we're able to catch i, I looked up three forties, and yeah they're, they're looking really good for week one so good luck yep. to them heading forward Awesome. Also, right. I do want to, since, since there is some thing in the chat, not to embarrass Christine, because I know I've been, oh, I've wait, been corrected. Yeah. I've been corrected on how I say things a lot. It's Churchville Chai Lai. Chai Lai. I know, okay. it, I, I know it's New just York, chili. Like <laughs> upstate New York stuff. I like I just go for it. <laughs> just yeah. do it. Yeah. yeah. At least yeah. that one was short, it's, and I just yeah, it's felt it chilly, like. but yeah, yeah. It's chilly. that's okay. Even when they were on Einstein in, in 2004, the announcer was like Churchville Chili High School. Yeah, oh good. No it's worries. just so like polarizing those two words, yeah, yeah. like when you say them in that way. So, <laughs> don't worry, I'll I'll probably botch up a lot of. I was wondering why Chad kept saying chili. I was very confused because I, I, I didn't notice he said it. But yeah, all right, yeah. sure. <laughs> Bunch <laughs> of hungry boys in the chat tonight. Yeah. Okay. All right, so moving on, uh, in the number 22 spot, Justin, can you tell us about Team 115? From Cupertino, California. See, I probably said that wrong. Monta Vista High School, it's MVRT, 15-5 and five overall. We're the finalists at the LA North Regional. So my second tall bot of the night, uh, 115 excelled playing reminder, especially in the match I watched. Uh, they had 44-14 launching bombs from behind the control panel, so that long shot from behind the wheel of fortune, whatever your team calls it. And 44-14 was making some shots, but they're also missing. And 115 did a great job at like, cleaning up the missed shots and then you know grabbing those overflow balls from the – um, the opposing human player to keep that feedback loop going. So they were just a great, uh, a great alliance working together. Um, and they fell a little bit short in the finals, but a great robot there from 115. Uh, really a nice climb as well. So if you didn't catch any of their matches, they're on the blue lines, but you can also catch them live uh, week five at the Sacramento Regional. Yeah, I mean, Justin, that's a great point. I mean, a team that can kind of clean up the change there. If you have a really strong shooter that can shoot yeah. from, you know, not up close, that can get them from long and then just fills up that, fills up the, um, I don't know what you call them, fills up the thing in the, like you said, that they have to put him back in. Right. Um, can just grab those and, and just, like you said, keep that loop going. So yeah, and that's a great job the, doing 15. Yeah, yeah, and one of the cool things about this game, right, as we kind of talked about at the top of the show, we saw, I saw 340 and 1787, um, both really, really good fender shooters, and they were kind of swapping out the fender shots, right? 340 shoot fender, they go back and get more. 1787 would come in, shoot fender, go back and get more, and they would cycle that around, and they were successful. They won. And then you see an alliance like this, completely different, right? Shooting yeah. long bonds from behind the wheel of fortune, and then 115 cleaning up in the front. They were also very successful. So yeah. You know, that's a testament to good game design where you can have two alliances playing pretty differently um, and both very successful. So it's good stuff. For sure. Okay, moving on to the 21st team. Mike's going to tell us about Team 610. North York, Ontario, Canada, and the Crescent School is Crescent Coyotes with an overall record of 10 and 6. They were the semifinalists at the Durham College District event. So coming off their final appearance on Tesla last year, the Yotes, that's what I'm going to call them now, uh, I've been watching a lot of coyote trapping videos, so that's another story. But the Yotes finished uh, fifth with an eight and four record with 18 uh, ranking points. They would captain the fourth alliance and would beat uh, the number five in, in 
um, quarterfinals, but would follow them to the number one seed in two matches there in the semis. They are tall lot um, and take some shots from uh, right in front of the uh, Wheel of Fortune in the trench. Um, love their intake, which um, can take power shots too wide uh, from the human player, which can get them in and out even that much quicker. So um, nice spot uh, and good luck uh, later this season. And there'll be another one um, that will be at uh, Waterloo. So um, that'll be that's just already shaping up to be a great event. Um, two teams, I think, already on this list yep. that will be at Waterloo. So yep. um, get your pop going. <laughs> yeah, uh, no kidding. Yeah, right. All right, so that's the Crescent Coyotes in um, our 21st spot. In our 20th spot, Justin's going to tell us about Team 2200. From Burlington, Ontario, Canada, M.M. Robinson High School, it's M.M. Ram Bodics, 15-3 and three overall, and with the winners, the Durham College District event. So this robot, if nothing else, is fast. It is just awesome to see this robot fly up and down the field. The turret and articulating hood react quickly to the goal, and their spindex or shooter combo releases the load out quickly and accurately. So short bots, um, this is my first short bot of the of um, the Tab 25 so far. And short robots really made their climb, the life of their climb, more difficult. Like tall robots have a very obviously much shorter distance to cover to go up and grab that bar. Um, short bots, much harder, but 2200 really makes it look easy. They got a nice fold out telescoping arm combo that's super fast, super reliable, and just another great machine from this Canadian powerhouse. So they're going to take a little bit of time off here, uh, but you can catch them again at the McMaster event in week six. So kind of to what Tower was talking about, there were so many events, and I feel bad saying this, there were so many events going on that I was trying to track. I was watching like LA North and obviously 340 in Miami Valley. I did not catch a single match in, in Ontario. Like, I feel bad. Like, 2200, 188, 610, all great teams that yeah. and more that were competing. I didn't get to catch a single one. And you, you kind of mentioned it here, Justin, just the their turret and articulating hood. I've seen just just in the, the small amount of matches I've seen, just I love just how many teams have kind of upped their game with this, right? Usually it yeah. used to kind of just be kind of the, the very select few would have tracking and then tracking and do it well, but just have already started to see so many teams that are doing this so efficiently and, and so well. It's just been it's been really great to see. Yeah, like everybody has a limelight yeah, nowadays. Exactly. Yeah. The limelight <laughs> is just, has just changed the game. Once you, once really you drop that 400, it's good to go for a while, huh? So. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly right. So while we move into our next spot, we're going to uh, give a big thank you to our, our friends at Striker for sponsoring uh, this show. Uh, Striker guys, uh, awesome company that has stepped up. And really, they've stepped up for a big reason. They have people who are in first, who work at Striker right now, who have awesome jobs, who get paid a butt ton of money, and who actually get to keep doing first freely. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you can't just skip work every day to do first, but uh, if you know some of the people that, that work for Striker that do first, they really do support you in doing that. So if you're looking for a fantastic career uh, that supports you being in first, uh, internships, they'll cover your housing, they pay really well for it, careers, no matter where you are, intro career, later on, they have careers all around the world, headquartered in Kalamazoo, Michigan, but all around the world you can get things. Uh, go check out their Strikers Careers blog, or you can find out uh, more about how they support FIRST at careers.strykr.com forward slash FIRST. And thanks a lot to Striker uh, for keeping fun, loud, live, independent, because they're super cool with us doing what we do. And that's mm -hmm. a big thing when we bring on sponsors is that we want sponsors that are going to, uh, we know are going to benefit the FIRST community, but then are also going to let us keep doing what we do and not say, thou shall say this and thou shall do it this way. <laughs> um, so that's that's why we really do like Striker because they're like, you know what, you guys do what you do. Uh, we, we just love, uh, we love FIRST and we love what you guys do for FIRST. So, so big thanks to Striker uh, for all their support uh, here, especially on the FRC Top 25. All right, moving on here. Uh, we're going to, uh, Christine's going to tell us about Team 27. From Clarkston, Michigan and Clarkston High School, it's Rush. With a current record of 14 and 4, they were winners of the FIM District Kettering University event number one and Excellence in Engineering Award, ranking, ranking in 70 district ranking points. So, I mean, Week one, whatever, 27 had a really good looking robot coming out week one. Um, I was surprised because it was not only tall, but did not have a turret on it, but they definitely were consistent throughout the entire event and ended up ranking fourth at the end of qualification matches. Um, they joined the number one alliance, captained by 2337 engineers and rookies every bot uh 8368 genesis stem academy so this alliance swept through the playoffs to take home a win um soaring they scored 35 power cells in finals two um 27 surprisingly no turret like i said before but they proved to be effective and reliable and autonomous um close range shooter right up against the fender 
um, for their alliance, but they'll be out of district at the Greater Pittsburgh Regional Week 4 and then Livonia District Week 5 before inevitably Michigan State Champs and World Champs in Detroit. Um, I expect them to keep getting better and better as the season goes on, so I was excited to see them kind of come out pretty consistent. I think they have a lot of speed to to kind of gain, but I think they have a pretty solid showing for Week 1. Yeah, and they're a team that will improve. I mean, they came oh, yeah. to uh, Central New York in 2018. Uh, 340 was there. Um, so we were there watching another early event and just kind of wanted to see 340 and see the game. Uh, and they were there, and they were just – and they would admit that they were struggling. They were certainly not as good as uh, I expect them to be. Um, and then the end of the year, they were an Einstein. So they're certainly yeah. a team that uh, <laughs> is going to, you know, is going to keep working and, and pick it up, which, you know, obviously this year they're already starting out as winners, which is great. But um, they're definitely going to keep improving. Mm-hmm. One of the things I was talking about on the Foundation show was just, uh, you know, some teams that maybe didn't make uh, the top 25 or the top 10 in FIM or just had poor performances out there. And I was really happy to see that Rush uh, really came out swinging quite well. And uh, just seeing, you know, watching the machine, obviously aesthetically very pleasing as well. Um, you know, a little a little slower on the intake than what I really would like to see. Uh, but mm-hmm. once they uh, once they get going, um, their shooter seems to be going pretty well overall. Uh, you'll see them taking some shots uh, near the front of that trench right there. And being, I, I think when I looked at most of the matches, about 70% accurate on those. So uh, if they can just ramp it up a little bit, uh, looking for really great things out of 27. Yeah, yeah. If, it was, uh, if it was an aesthetic robot top 25, they'd be higher. It's yeah, a yeah, right. It's a good looking machine. If we always talk about, right, if you if you lined up robots without any numbers on it and you looked at them, you would know it's like a, it's a rush robot, right? Right. Like you just like it. So, um, <laughs> rush. Very well, very well done the 27. Mm-hmm. All right. So, moving on to the 18th spot, Mike, why don't you tell us about Team 694? Yeah, from New York, New York, from the city. So good they named it twice. It, and Stuyvesant High School, it's Stipoles, like High Poles. With an undefeated <laughs> record of 15 0, they were the winners of the Pell Medal Regional. Justin, how good does Myrtle Beach sound? And Christine, and Tyler, I guess. <laughs> how good does Myrtle Beach sound right now to you guys? Pretty so, great. <laughs> we got snow today, so yeah, that sounds nice. <laughs> uh, 340 went west, uh, 634 went south. So uh, they entered and they would take the number one seed going 9 and 0. They had 21 ranking points, topping out at um, 354 points in semifinals match one. Uh, I'm not sure how many penalty points there were in that one, but it's pretty high. Um, they dominated, they just dominated the playoffs. They are a tall bot. Um, I just really love their nicely arched shot they have um, that they take from the edge of the edge of the trench, and then they cycle from there, and then they hang at the end. So uh, they've won the New York City Regional two years in a row. They look to make it three later on this year, uh, but first they'll be at um, the Hudson Valley Regional. So congrats to 694 and our uh, good old friend and uh, buddy Joe Blay on 694. I'm glad we got the person from New York to pronounce the uh, team name because I always mess it up. Stuy, Stuy I yeah. tell you, I, I would I would mess it up too, except I, Joe, our, our good friend Joe Blay. Yeah. Put a, he used to be on this Chief Duff, I think. It's Stuy Pulse like High Pulse. Yeah. I'm like, oh. I can, <laughs> not Stewie Pulse? Not Stewie Pulse, which Stewie I think Pulse? Mike and I called it the first yeah. time that they were on the top 25 list. <laughs> Dude, we've had some cringe moments with those two. We're like, Stewie Pulse? Stewie, Stewie, Stewie Pulse? Mike, Mike, the cringe <laughs> moments is what makes the FRC top 25. Oh, you're, now. you're dang right. <laughs> Heck yeah. yeah. For sure. All right, so that's 694 in our 18th spot. And in our 17th spot, it's going to be team 5990. From Modine, Israel? Speaking it's Trigon. 15-2 and two overall. <laughs> and the winner is the ISR event number one. I will, I will say here my uh, annual pledge that i hope isr changes their district event names at some point i think we can do a little bit better than event one <laughs> event two event three event four i mean i don't know it's, it's easy to follow him I yeah that's true. That's true. <laughs> i guess i mean but... like like basically like if they change it like something in hebrew or something like that are you gonna remember that better than isr one no but i feel like they will like it'd be well, more meaningful okay, that, for them that's probably true event number one so playing in one of the first matches of the Infinite Recharge season, 5990 excelled throughout the event leading and tally up scoring. I think they played qualification at seven, um, and they were the first event of the year. So they were very early on. And they were hard to miss on the field with their bright blue intake. They can in, uh, pick up power cells quickly. Uh, and though they don't have a turret, it, it does not slow them down one bit. The robot um, reacts to the goal um, just by turning its drive base, obviously. And um, it's, still, it's still extremely successful. They shoot with a high velocity, and that also increases their accuracy, especially when shooting uh, from distance. So a great machine from 50. 990 and you can catch them at their second event at the isr district event number three one of the things uh you know in israel you'll see the elo 
uh, rankings be a little bit off a lot of times with teams from Israel because uh, something seems like like Trigon, for example. Uh, I don't believe they had this spectacular year last year, so you'd probably look at you know what happened previously uh, to him. I actually didn't look to see how they did. I guess I'm inferring, but we can check real quick. Uh, but you'll see these teams start to, to rank up. Before. Actually, you know what? I lied. They won the ISR championship last year, so what the <laughs> hell am I talking about, I guess? But uh, but their record was 25-27-0. Uh, so you know, looking at where ELO is for that versus their actual ranking, uh, I thought this team looked really sharp. It was great to see uh, how competitive the Israel events keep becoming every single mm-hmm. year and uh loved loved watching uh you know both these the uh finals uh for this was uh pretty spectacular um as well too just watching uh them go against uh 1577 and 1574 uh and taking uh the event there uh i really thought that the blue alliance was going to win it and they, the red alliance just came in and just looked absolutely phenomenal yeah yeah All right. Oh, oh sorry, sorry. How about those awkward uh, moments? Oh, no, Justin's out. <laughs> that, that was totally me, 100%. Sorry, I got lost in the chat. Um, <laughs> all right. In the last team, I think, yep, the last team before our break uh, is team number in the 16th spot, team 1986. A top 25 OG from Lee Summit, Missouri, and Lee Summit West High School. It's Team Titanium. They have an overall record of 15 and 4, and they were the finalists at the Greater Kansas City Regional. So 1986 is a low bot that is fast quick quick around the field um something we see year in and year out from 1986 is just how they really excel at their programming um it's on display again this year with their split auto knocking in their starter power cells and then going to the strength to pick up more and another nicely really arc to them to get into the outer goal there so again they're just really quick around the field and they cycle um quick as well obviously so um something you'll really notice for them they have a dual-sided intake um, which is really uh, unique and really cool to see. Um, they would lose to the number three seed in the finals in three matches, uh, but they did pick up the wild card. So they still have two regionals to go as they look for their 2020 um, gold medal. Uh, but good luck in Memphis and then on to Central Missouri uh, for 1986 later this season. So one of the things in 19, two, two comments I have, and they're going to be a little bit of criticisms and prefacing saying that I love 1986. They've been one of my favorite teams for a really long time. Uh, number one, it does seem like a lot of the shots that they take are right up against the uh, barrier. And while it's nice to have that safe zone, it seems to delay their cycle times quite a bit. And they're not always uh, as accurate as I'd like to see them uh, as this as well. And I, I, their last cycle, they did that. I'm not sure they're going to try to do it in this one as well, too. But you see, they're just trying to plow through this defensive bot to get there. And I feel like uh, that's just going to slow down their cycle times too much. Really like to see them shooting from before, and you see that some of those shots they have are, are hitting against that port wall there and not getting fully in. Uh, number two, and I'm really sorry, Team Titanium, but uh, how many times are you guys going to rank number one or get picked first and not win an event? It has been a while for you guys. I know, and I feel bad saying it, but it's uh, – Man, like every time, every time I see, all right, they're like rank this. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> like, I wonder if they rank four or something like that. They'll, <laughs> if they'll end up a little bit better. Uh, but like I said, I love Titanium. The robots every year, uh, you know, obviously, aesthetically look great, and, and they're a great team as well too. But uh, you know, at some point, it's so many finalists, so many knocked down in the semifinals, that sort of thing. Really want to see them uh, take. I'm sure they want to as well too, right? But uh, we'd really like to see them take take an event win. Uh, and I think their next event is, as you said, the Memphis Regional. Uh, so looking for some big things there, I'm sure. For sure. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch, keeping fun loud, live, and independent.